Yeah, we'll just get these longer studs in for the the magnetic SRM sump plate. Nice bit of kit. And that's it. Well, a bit of juggling and a bit of messing about. A bit of help from my son. And that appears to be the engine back in. And a bit of the uh, the wiring to renew from the alternator. We're just in the middle of that as well. Rocker box now fixed in position. Needed a couple of goes at it because uh, I didn't get the exhaust lifter fitted properly, so I had to redo it. One of the uh, studs on the top was too short, so I had to take the rocker box off again, take the stud out, and redo and make a stud. Um, it just needs tightening down, they're only very loose because <laughs> I've run out of spring washers so I've got to go and get some of them tomorrow. Just tackling a little small problem here. This hole here that takes the C, the screw from the, uh, the outer case, it's got a stripped thread in there. So I'm attempting to put a helicoil in. That's the heli coil units down there. I'm going to try and fit the one in there and uh, hopefully that will cure that. Clutch plates fitted and adjusted, ready for the primary drive cover to be put on. Rear wheel on and uh, carburetor partially on anyway. Another unforeseen problem. I was wiring in the speedometer light. <clears throat> I had to take the headlamp rim off the shell. It's always been a very, very tight fit. And I just can't get it back on. I've pushed it and tried to fasten this nut. And it just won't stay on here. And I'm frightened I cause damage. I'm frightened I break the lens. Trying try to, to push it on here. So the only thing I can do is I'm going to have to dismantle it tomorrow. And see if I can rework the edges and, 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 and get it to fit, get them to match up properly. If I can't get them to match up properly, I'm going to have to look at maybe buying another headlamp shell. This uh, here is the chain guard for a Barracuda uh, C25 or a B25 Starfire, but it's a chain guard. I couldn't get a chain guard. Anyway, I've looked all over. I did see one that was £200 for a chain guard. And eventually, I found this one for sale in Australia. So, six weeks later, I got the chain guard. Probably with the income import tax, it probably cost us about £70 altogether. But the problem with it, with this chain guard is, it's had the end bit sawn off. That is how it should look like with the bit on the end and that's had the end bit sawn off but everything else is really solid and fine so today I'm going to take this to uh, a local, local fabrication company and, uh, and hope that they can fabricate the end bit for for it and then I'll uh, I'll get it painted. 
So that's the job for today. Sometimes things puzzle you. I came to reassemble the time inside and put the kickstarter on and there was no pin to secure the end of the spring which I found really strange because the, the kickstarter was working when you know when I got the bike and I have not been able to find that pin anywhere anywhere and I've searched high and low I keep all the, the parts pretty much together There's, you know in boxes and whatnot but there was no pin so I've had to send away for a new one which I've just fitted there but it will forever puzzle me how the kickstarter worked without having a pin in it because it did work so that's a mystery um, we're going to reassemble it uh, inside the the shaft where the shaft kickstart the shaft goes through there there is an oil seal oil seal there and it, it's a bit damaged that oil seal so i'm sending away for another oil seal as well and you know let's hope when that comes we can get this site together again i've no idea how to go about on about timing the engine because i've never timed an engine with electronic ignition so that's going to be a real pause of that one but we'll get to that uh, as and when I've just fitted a new oil seal to the kickstarter I sent away for a one from one of the suppliers on eBay it cost about so six or seven pounds with postage and packaging it came and it was the wrong one and um, a friend told me to try just a local company have a look on the internet and find somewhere that does oil seals and I went around to a local company across the shelf and they supplied me with the correct oil seal there for two pounds so that's a little tip don't always send away to the BSA parts spares specialists for things especially for bearings and seals because there are specialist companies that you can go to probably a lot nearer to where you live and they can do it over the counter I've been having a bit of bother fitting this uh, rocker box cover um, so while I had it off again this time I've had the um, the rocker arm I've had a bit of weld put on there where the the valve lifter lifts it but I've had a, a, a bit of problem fitting it and getting the valve clearances and someone has told me and they could be right the problem, the reason why the valve clearances are so tight, um, because on these rocker boxes, the adjuster is is there. It's a concentric shaft that adjusts the gaps, and there's hardly any gap on the exhaust. And what I'm told is because I've had the cylinder head uh, re refurbished. And the valves seating re refinished, if you like, that that can affect the length of the push rods here. And I'm told that if I take a little bit off the push rod, of the uh, the exhaust push rod, a little bit off the length, take the cap off, and a little bit off, it'll give me more leeway. Um. So that's what I'm going to have to do. I would never. Uh, come across that myself and something unless somebody told me um but it's it's just one of the things that you learn when you work on old bikes so i'm going to do that because i've had the the rocker cover off three or four times i've damaged the gasket so i now have to send away for it and wait until i get a new gasket um and i'll refit it with a slightly shortened push rod and hopefully then i can get the um the, the clearances that I need to have. Eventually I was able to uh, to refit the kickstart. The kickstart quadrant had to be milled a little bit because it was a little bit too large but it's been done now. 
still a little bit of a tight fit but I'm sure it'll work loose so hopefully that's that side done obviously I'll need the exhaust on after a lot of searching I managed to get a exhaust valve lifter lever you can just see it there from a guy called Martin Green on Just Beezers Martin, I don't know Martin and he very kindly contacted me when he knew I was looking for one and uh, and I got this uh, lever off him. So it's been fitted. I've had to juggle the controls round on the handlebars to um, to fit it because it didn't have one on. So I'm now waiting of a of a rocker box gasket, and then I can um, get the rocker boxes back on, and then hopefully when that's back on, I can um, adjust the exhaust valve lifter and uh, and use it for starting the engine yes some people say you don't need it because it's only a 250 um, but it does if you use it it does take a lot of the strain and stress out of the kickstart mechanism and uh, and preserves it and stops it from being damaged so yeah, instead of doing the macho thing, if you use the proper exhaust lifter, you'll probably preserve your engine for a little bit longer. So I intend to do that. Okay, that's the um, the the rocker box on and gasket, and I've just fitted there, as you can see down the middle. I've just fitted the um, the valve lifter, which kind of moves like that. That's the valve lift lifter mechanism. Uh, tap it set correctly now that I've had to uh, shorten the push rods just a little bit because of the work that was done on the cylinder head but I can now get the uh, the valve clearances that I need. So, um, so yeah, valve lifter done. There's the, uh, the new valve lifter handle and we're kind of Making a little bit of progress. Well, I've got the primary on now, and uh, and the timing cover and the exhaust. And what I'm trying to do now, or attempting to do, is to tame the engine. I've never really done this with electronic ignition, but I've um, I've set the piston at top dead centre. And then taking it back the recommended amount uh, just before top dead centre. And I'm told when I do that, the electronic ignition, and I'll come round to this side here, because I don't know if we can actually see it. The electronic ignition should be, when you look through the hole here, there is a little dot. And the dot is in right in the middle of the hole there so apparently that means the ignition uh, the ignition is fine so we'll um, we'll put it back together and um, <laughs> and hope that it is fine we'll soon find out well I've just temporarily connected the battery up there and as you can see I've got a spark there you go. Got a spark, so hopefully we're part of the way there. Well, I got a brand new battery. Uh, brought it home, put the acid in, charged it up for uh, 24 hours, and it's fine. I've stuck it on the bike there, and as you can see, the optimum, it's attached to the optimate just to keep it maintained. Petra tanks on. Um, I've got to put some oil in the primary chain case and then I'll put the seat on and, uh, and give it a try and see whether this time we can start it. Well, for the first time in quite a while, I've got an empty ramp for the minute because the Barracuda is back where it was a few months ago. So I've managed to uh, to put her back together as best I can. 
the next thing to do is to try and start her up and I will be doing that but I'm not doing it at the minute because I need just a little bit more time butchers together and just have a little look round look she's together and she's looking okay and I'm just really really hoping this time I can start her I'm still waiting at the chain guard the chain guard is being done by a fabricator so uh, I will have a proper chain guard on it and I'm also waiting from for a lower mud guard steer and that's coming all the way from New Hampshire in the United States so I'm gonna have a chain guard from Australia and a front mud guard steer from America hopefully when they all get here right this is it after a few months of uh, messing around and fiddling with the bike, I've got it outside and I'm going to try to start it. And this is a genuine attempt. I haven't tried it before. So, you know, nothing's prearranged. I didn't start it off camera and then come back to it. I've never tried to start this bike since I got it. Well, I tried once and it didn't work. So, we're going to try again. The throttle's come loose on there, so I'll have to postpone it just for a second till I get a screwdriver and tighten it up. Right, we'll try it again, I've tightened it up. The gears are there and it runs. I'm so, so pleased. So that's been the little excursion with the Barracuda. It's taken us a few months um, and we're probably not all the way there yet, but we're 90% of the way. Thanks for watching.